I think the primary markers of someone who understands God as the just judge, but doesn't understand him as the loving adoptive father, is really motive in our work. And so the, an illustration that I've used historically is that um, there, there's really nothing, my wife and I come from different backgrounds, completely different backgrounds. And, and my mom just kind of took care of everything in the house growing up. So I mean, I didn't put my plates in the dishwasher. I didn't, you know, when I was finished drying off the towel, I just threw it on the floor. I didn't do, you know, mom just kind of came behind us all. You know, I think that's a helicopter mom or whatever it's called. And she would just handle all of it. And then there was magically clothes put in the drawers, magically, you know, uh, things hung up. And, and my wife's family didn't operate like that at all. You know, Lauren was expected to do those things. And so when we got married, um, I mean, that was quite a collision, you know, where she was like, hey, what's that? And I was like, it's a towel. Wow, right? I mean, it didn't quite click. She's not asking me a question. And then what I've learned over the years is that I'll find myself doing all sorts of things that have never been on my radar to do and never been like, you know what, this really makes me happy to do these things. But because I love Lauren like I love Lauren, it really is fun for me. I mean, that's how dumb this sounds. Fun for me to do dishes and put them up. Uh, it's fun for me to fold my clothes. It's fun for me to do some of those things. And I'm not, if she was here, she'd be like, I'm still a long way away from where she'd like me to be. But what I noticed was an emotional switch in me that actually enjoys activities that I historically hated because I know they please my wife. And, and so I think that motive is that spot that we most clearly see um, whether we understand God as judge or understand God as father or where we're understanding the robustness of the gospel and that he's both. And, and so when you understand that God delights in you, then man, you want to know what he's like and you want to know uh, how he operates and what he has to say, and what, right? And that's, so that changes how we read the Bible when, when we understand God delights in us. Um, and, and it changes prayer. Doesn't it change prayer? I mean, if you honestly believe that God delights in you, loves to hear from you, if you believe that God has asked you to pester him and that your pestering him delights him, and you're going to pester the Lord. You're going to run to the Lord. You're not going to busy yourself doing things that you think appease him, but you're going to understand that he has been appeased in Christ Jesus, and then you're going to be able to run to him as Abba Father, right? And, and so I think that motive in action is going to be your primary marker of whether or not somebody understands adoption. And then I always say, man, I, I read people's joy. I mean, for me, I, there, is a, there is a visible, tangible joy in the Lord when people understand that God loves them that's not there when they understand that God's a just judge. So they might be grateful that they've been forgiven. And I think the way I've used it before is you don't, you know, you, you don't want to go camping with the judge, right? You want to go camping with dad. You don't want to go throw the ball with the judge. You want to go throw the ball with dad. You, you don't want to hang out with the judge and, and hear, you know, how many people have been guilty and how many, you want to sit around with dad and hear about his affection for his children. And um, that, that's the, to me, the big marker is really what's your motive? Is it fear-based? Is it love-based? I feel like we keep coming back to kind of the same thing here. Uh, do you understand God's delight and love for you?